You're very welcome along here to National Basketball Arena in Tala for the under 16A All Ireland Schools League final between Skull Creasery of Port Leash playing in dark green and Presentation Secondary School of Castle Island, County Kerry. I'm joined here by Danny O'Mahony. Danny, this is set up for to be a cracking final here. Yeah, it is, Mary. Exactly you said. With the obviously the fact that it's an under 16A basketball final, okay. How it would look is with the A basketball, you're, we have the two best under 16 teams in the country in schools basketball up against each other here today. So it definitely proves to be an exciting game. Yes, indeed. Skull Crease 3, of course, won the cup back in January. They won back to back cup titles, indeed. And Castle Island, meanwhile, are the reigning league champions. So two teams with very big experience here at this arena and at this high level of All Ireland finals. And a couple of young Irish international stars on the court here as well with Shauna Dooley of Port Leash and indeed Kira Byrne also of Port Leash recently been named on Carl Kilbride's under 16 squad as they prepare for European Championships this summer so a lot of young talent out on the court today and we've no doubt this is going to be a cracker as just as we say it Shauna Dooley almost got Port Leash off the mark there And they're going to set up. They've got the offensive rebound and they're just passing it around now, trying to find a way through Sarah Fleming, that is, trying to find a way through the Castle Island defence. Shout out to all of you guys watching us down in Kerry or indeed in Leash at the schools, in your school. And we hope you're shouting loudly for your teams down there. Sarah Fleming just slowing things up, setting up her side's offense. A floating ball inside there was well read by Castle Island's Gemma Kearney. And M. O'Regan at the top of the key. Dished out to Kearney once more. She gets Support all the way around to Emma O'Regan. She's against the shot clock. And that one doesn't fall. And we are going to be out of bounds now for a Port Leash ball. A bit nervy here at the moment, Danny, isn't it? Yeah, exactly, Mary. Look, after, obviously, two minutes of basketball, you can see like, both teams were obviously due to play in the final a few weeks back, but due to the snow conditions, obviously, these games were rescheduled. So both teams are obviously eager to get things on the way, but obviously, as you said, a bit of nerves have to be taken into it. Um, probably know each other as well a bit a bit too well just with a few of them probably being involved with Irish teams and Irish panels throughout the years and again obviously on the coaching side obviously Pat Critchley and John Wright two experienced coaches it looks like as if it's going to be a bit of a tactical battle out there both teams are playing a bit of a man-to-man -man, um, and obviously just making things very very tight to ensure that there's no free space I need to get an open opportunity yes indeed 5.59 on the clock here and as Danny said, a score yet to be registered as the teams try to get by two strong man-to-man -man defences. But Gronya Walsh is doing her utmost inside there for Castle Island. It comes back out to Anya Sheehan, but Port Leash scoop up the rebound. And on the break, unlucky there for Kira Byrne, but it's gone out of play and it's gone in her favour. Inbound play, just about kept in. No, it wasn't. It's gone out of bounds. This, of course, the second game of the day. St. Patrick's Grammar School of Armagh winning the under 16 C boys final in the game before this. And it's gonna be followed by the under 19 C girls final which is set to be an absolute cracker between Colossia Pubbles Satanta and OLM of Drimna. A big Dublin derby here. Colossia Pubbles Satanta, of course, reigning cup champions as well at that level. So some interesting games indeed. As Port Leash, Skull Crease 3 get off the mark with 5.14 on the clock. And it is Jasmine Burke who scored the basket and should be going to the free throw line for the bonus as well. Oh 
misses the first and good rebounding from Castle Island it sends Emma O'Regan free she finds Grania Walsh inside but Port Leash come out with it and a big drive is on here from Kira Byrne and the foul is called We're going for a timeout here, courtesy of Castle Island, with five minutes to play in this opening quarter. Here to the National Basketball Arena in Tala. Five minutes to go here in this opening quarter of the under 16A Girls All Ireland School League final. Colossia Chris Ree of Port Leash against Presentation Castle Island. And it is Colossia Chris Ree, or Skull Chris Ree, on the free throw line. Kira Byrne missing the first there. misses the second and good rebounding once more under the boards there Anya Sheehan of Castle Island the drive up the court though from Grania Walsh results in a turnover and it comes back outside here Sarah Fleming's shot doesn't go Oh, good hands from Shauna Dooley, but it's gone out of bounds for a Castle Island ball, giving her team time, though, to reset their defence. We're at the midway point now, Danny. What are you thinking so far of this opening first quarter? Uh, I think very both teams obviously have been playing a bit nervous. Um, a lot of shots that probably usually would drop haven't been dropping. Uh, you can see, obviously, obviously, Pat Critchley with Skull Critchley. What he's looking to do is looking to kind of implement the full court press. They're looking to be aggressive as much as they can and try and obviously stop it then. Obviously, the first time out of the game went to John Enright in Castle Island. We could see down there. John Enright spent a lot of time writing on the board, just exactly showing the girls some of the gaps that he was noticing that they could potentially exploit. So it'll be interesting now for the next four minutes to see exactly can the Castle Island girls implement some of the um, changes that John Enright wanted to see. Yes, indeed. Uh, Gronia Walsh getting Castle Island off the mark there with a well-finished layup. So it's two points apiece here at the arena. Out of bounds there, and we are. It's going to be a skull free three ball. Three minutes and 50 seconds to go here. Shauna Dooley and Kira Byrne bringing the ball up for Port Leash. Jasmine Burke's pass well intercepted there by Kira Fitzgerald. But Shauna Dooley almost won it back. And we're headed for another timeout, this time courtesy of Port Leash. It's two points apiece with 3.35 to go.
Emma O'Regan of Castle Island. A lovely, lovely pass inside to Anya Sheehan. Unfortunately, it doesn't fall for her though, but the idea was right. And we are back at the other end of the court with Skull Crease 3. And a lovely basket there, Danny, from um, Skull Crease 3. A great, like, up and under. Yeah, that was really good to see. Good offense by Skull Crease 3. Obviously, they moved the basketball. There was a couple of cuts from the offensive players. And again, just, you know, finish up with a lovely play. Obviously, we have here now Crease 3, obviously, again, implementing their full court man-to-man -man defense. Really trying to put the pressure on Castle Island. Well, the pressure certainly paying off, as you said, as Fleming, who got that last score, is now looking for another one to add to her tally. But again, it is Anya Sheehan. She's doing great work under the boards there for Castle Island. Just unlucky once more. Not to see that pay off for them as Kira Byrne. Oh, what a sidestep through. That was a great move, Danny. Yeah, no, really lovely basketball. Obviously, Kerbourne picked the ball up. She's seen that there was potential, obviously, to attack the basket. She made it way through as the defender came across. She just did a lovely one-two step, took her to the left, then back to the right, and finished the up. Really good basketball by Kerbourne. And here we go again. Port Leash is finding a little bit of a rhythm here. But much to the relief of Castle Island, it doesn't work for them. And it's a no score there for Gronia Walsh. She's called for a travel instead. And it's going to be a skull creased re ball. Dooley, Shauna Dooley, of course, the MVP of that cup final that they won 68 36 against Crescent Comprehensive. The happiest man in Dublin that day was Pat Critchley. Sarah Fleming. Lovely sidestep there again. And super rebounding by Jasmine Burke, but it comes back to Castle Island. And Emma O'Regan. No fear, she takes it all the way herself. But Sarah Fleming is there to pick up the loose ball and Port Leash back on the attack. Kira Burns shot doesn't drop and there's a battle there for the rebound. And again, Castle Island coming out with it there. They're doing great work under the boards, Danny. Oh, really good to see obviously Castle Island controlling their own rebounds. And that is something that obviously paid dividend in the longer term of the game. At the end of the day, team comes down obviously, they have 24 seconds to shoot the basketball. If you can limit them to taking one shot, if they miss, you get the rebound, you go to the day. It, it, it makes for you to be the successful team. On the other end, obviously what we can see here is Crease 3 is every time um, when they go forward, they're trying to trying to get as many opportunities as they can. Just like this one, obviously there, they had a lovely score from Jasmine Burke. Yes, indeed, it's opened up there. Scoring now eight points to two with 45 seconds to go here in this opening quarter. You would imagine Pat Critchley after that timeout is pretty happy with how things have panned out for the remainder of the quarter, Danny. Yeah, exactly. You can see Pat Critchley, obviously, he's up on his feet there since the start of the game. Um, again, I think he, he will look at the girls and obviously say, look, it's what we call it kind of sometimes the arena factor. A lot of these schools would be, wouldn't be used to playing too many games in the National Basketball Arena. When they play a lot of their games, obviously, they play in their school gym, which is a lot smaller surroundings, a smaller court, even the such things like the basket may be slightly different. I think Pat Critchie will accept that his team were probably a bit nervous coming into this first couple of moments, but definitely happy the way the last uh, few minutes went since that time out. Yes, indeed. Jason Clean likes to tell me it's one of the hardest places to shoot in, but I don't know if that's just his excuse, Danny, or not. We'll find out this Sunday, sure, when he's playing. But unlucky there for Gronia Walsh, Castle Island. Just comes off her foot there. And it's gone out for a crease three ball with 20 seconds to go here in this opening quarter. Kira Byrne looking for options inside. And it's dished back outside here. That one drops short and it's gone out of bounds for a crease three ball. 2.5 seconds to see if they can do something before the first quarter buzzer. 
And again, great work by Anya Sheehan. She's been fantastic for Castle Island on defense so far today. And that is the end of the first 8-2 Skull Crease 3 lead. And we're ready to get quarter two underway here in this under 16A Girls All Ireland Schools League final between School Cree Three of Port Leash wearing green and St. Mary's, or not St. Mary's, Castle Island <laughs> presentation school, Castle Island. I got so used to saying it after the cup when St. Mary's at Castle Island were up here uh, in the NICC Women's Cup final. Great work, Danny, indeed, while we're on the subject. Going on down in Kerry basketball, we've got a uh, Two teams now up in the Men's Super League in Kerry. Caloriglin winning the league in Men's Division 1. And uh, across the board, really great work going on throughout Clarny, Tralee, and indeed Castle Island. Yeah, definitely. In particular, obviously, next year having two uh, Kerry teams in the Men's Super League. You know, Well, we know it's always going to be a sellout down in Kerry. Cause Can't wait for that game. They get huge <laughs> support, but that game in particular, is really, it's going to be interesting to see what Caloriglin obviously do during the summer. And as you know, obviously... Um, uh, Trilly Warriors are always going to be there, thereabouts next year again. So it's going to be really interesting to see how that game pans out next season. Yeah, can't wait for that. All roads lead to Kerry for that one. But back to Castle Island. And Emma Regan inbounds to Gemma Kearney. Gronya Walsh cross down to Hilary O'Connor. Kearney again, a lovely ball inside. Lovely ball movement here from Castle Island as they try to break down that defense. And a drive through from Emma O'Regan doesn't fall for her. But great rebounding by Kira Fitzgerald and then Hilary O'Connor sees them back with the ball again and it pays off on the fourth time of asking Gronya Walsh. That's big boards there for Castle Island, Danny. Yeah, no, really is it. And as I said earlier in the first quarter, again, it comes down to the team that takes the most shots will give themselves the most opportunity to score the basketball. I think Coach Enright, uh, John Enright there, Castle will be really happy how his team has started this quarter. Even though they only scored one basket, but how, how aggressive they've been on the offense. They've missed a couple of shots, they've chased on the ball, and they seem like a different team starting this quarter. Yeah, definitely a, a bit of a spark in them here, all right. And what a lovely, lovely move. Gronya Walsh all the way across to Hilary O'Connor who's checked into the game and is already making a huge impression on it and it's back to a two point game all of a sudden and just as I say it at the other end of the court Kira Byrne finds Shauna Dooley and they reply in kind with a lovely layup under the board yeah, I think the nerves have definitely wore off now in the second quarter both teams starting this quarter really really aggressive and really really uh, good attacks at the basket Already probably scoring as much this quarter as we did see in the whole first quarter. Yeah, indeed. And a great score for Emma, from Emma O'Regan. She drove in on the initial attack. It wove its way around the key and back to her. And she finished in style. That was all net. Oh, great defense from Kira Fitzgerald. And is she going to go all the way? No, but there's good follow-up play from Gronya Walsh. And Hilary O'Connor, I think it is. Yes, it is. Draws the foul under the backboard, and it's going to be an end-line ball for Castle Island. O'Connor dispossessed by Shauna Dooley. And 
Kira Byrne. Pops it outside to Sarah Fleming. Lovely play inside to Jasmine Burke. It's a much livelier quarter already. That one doesn't fall for Gronia Walsh. Sarah Fleming was tempted to give the long ball up to Kira Byrne. She does it and gets it back again. A brilliant defense in there by Gronia Walsh from Castle Island. Now the jump ball has not gone in their favor, but she stopped what looked like a certain basket for School Cree Street. Gronia O'Reilly outside to Fleming. Looked to have come off a Port Leash player. Yes, it did. Five minutes to go here. 12 8 Skull Priest lead. Again, great vision from Castle Island to see Grania Walsh free up the court, and she's after drawing the foul now. As Rebecca Redden checked in for Skull Priest there just a couple of moments ago. I have a feeling, Danny, there's a lot of excitement left in this game. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you look with 4.54 remaining in the second quarter. And again, after the slow start, it's starting to get a bit entertaining now. Just obviously on the last one, obviously you see Pat Critchley just shouting out to his team there, instructing them of a change of defence. I think he won't be too happy for how this second quarter has started for Skull Creek 3. So he'll be looking to change. Yeah, the next couple of minutes are definitely going to be interesting. They won't be happy that Castle Island got a couple of runs there. And a great pass inside from Dooley to Byrne. It just, just goes out of play, though. And we're headed for a timeout here with 4.40 to go in quarter two. Skull Crease 3 up by four. Four forty to go here in the second quarter of the under sixteen A All Ireland School League final. Skull Crease three currently leading by four against Presentation Castle Island. But there's a long, long way to go yet. Looks like Castle Island were expecting a press there. It didn't come though from Cree Street and instead Grania Walsh with a lovely crossover and unlucky not to see that one fall because it was a great move through the heart of the Port Leash defense. Redden. Again, great, great work on defense, Kira Fitzgerald. But Redden, super work to get back to the other end of the court and win it back for Skull Cree Street. Kira Byrne pops out to Dooley. Redden, Byrne again. Jasmine inside. Shauna Dooley follows up and it comes out instead to Kira Fitzgerald. You gotta say, Danny, the work, I know I've said it about 10 times already, but Castle Island are really impressing me on their rebounds and working under the boards there. Yeah, you can see definitely, and they obviously are the smaller team. They probably don't have anybody 
with a similar height, obviously, as Jasmine Burke. But they're doing a really good job at keeping them off the offensive rebounds, really trying to limit them to maybe, you know, one shot max per quarter. So it's really, really good to see. I'm sorry, one shot per possession. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Oh, what a fabulous shot from Gronia Walsh just in response there to Redden's fast break layup at the other end. And we're back to a four-point game, three minutes and 12 to go. Coach Enright delivering defensive instructions there to his team. And the foul is called instead. And Kira Byrne is going to be going through the free throw line. And just as we say it, Coach Enright calls a timeout with 3.05 to go here in the second quarter. Three oh five to go here in the second quarter of this under sixteen A Girls All Ireland School League final. Skull Creasery of Port Leash leading at the moment by three, and Kira Byrne hoping to extend that from the free throw line. Palasha Pubble Satanta in the house for their next game. Katie Williamson in the front row there. She would have been under one of the under-16 Ireland stars from last summer, Andy Gilscott, and has recently been named on Pat O'Neill's under-18 team as well. So she's sure to be one of the standout stars for Satanta in the next game. With just a little bit of a delay to tip-offs today as well, because the first game was a little bit delayed. So if you're waiting for that game, it's about five minutes behind, not too much. And a two-point game we have here, 15-13 with 2.41 to play. Jasmine Burke, lovely dish outside. And again, Kira Fitzgerald working so, so hard there and managing to keep a hold of it for Castle Island. Emma O'Regan out to Kearney. O'Regan looks like she wants the long shot, but Caught a second time of it, and instead the shot goes up from Gemma Kearney, and what a score it is, and Presentation Castle Island have taken the lead. 15-16, Danny. Yeah, this is a real interesting two minutes now left in the in the first half. So both teams have both used all their timeouts. So Enright and Critchley are now restricted to staying on the sideline, and they really can't implement the game too much. Um, Castle Island obviously taking their first lead of the game, so it's interesting to see how the last two minutes plays out now. Good work inside there from Skull Crease 3. Edges them back in front. And Castle Island will want to score from this offence. And again, Kira Fitzgerald wins it back for them there. Lovely move through by Gronia Walsh. She gets her own rebound, goes up for the second one. And a great score. While at the other end, supervision from Kira Byrne to pop it inside to Grania O'Reilly. And O'Reilly draws the foul going up and she'll be headed for the free throw line. First one's good. One twelve on the clock. Draw game.
She misses the second, so we're going to stay tied at 18 points as the jump ball is set to go in favor of Skull Creasery. Kira Byrne outside to O'Reilly to Dooley. Looks like a foul. Yes, it is a foul, and it's going to be a Castle Island ball. Yeah, Mary, that foul actually there went on number seven, Kira Byrne. And uh, referee just felt that she. She got in the way of uh, the defender, you know, stopping the defender to play defense. So it's kind of called like a blocking offensive foul. So with that foul, it actually puts Kira Byrne on three personal fouls. It's a good coaching decision by Pat Critchley. He's just going to sit Kira down for the next 46 seconds to ensure that when she plays the second half of the game, she still has two fouls left. Yes, indeed. One of the key players for Skull Crease 3, so can't afford to pick up another foul this early in the game. 46 seconds to go here before the halftime break. O'Reilly for Christry inside to Fleming. A lovely spin move, but she meets a wall of defenders in there. Reading to O'Reilly. She draws the foul once more. And it's against Emma O'Regan. We'll be headed to the free throw line once more. That actual foul there, I want Emma O'Regan puts her on three personal fouls. So but well, you can see, obviously, their coach, John Enright, is just trying to have a, a quick conversation with his player on the sideline. Just an instructor, 31 seconds to go. He wants to leave her in the game. Just make sure she doesn't pick up that fourth foul now. Yeah, it's, as we said, it's very early in the game to be needing to worry about fouls as a lovely ball from O'Regan into Kearney. Kira Fitzgerald again keeping a hold of it. A super block from Sarah Fleming there. Of Skull Crease 3 sets them off, but the referee deems Anya Sheehan to have fouled her as she went on the break. And with 9.4 seconds to go, we are headed, yes we are, we're headed to the free throw line. Yeah, just an that foul obviously there, the foul went to number 10, Anya Sheehan because they have picked up more than four personal fouls, so they have four team fouls between them in that quarter, that foul then results obviously in two free shots. So I think obviously John Inner will be a bit disappointed in that one. Um, his team obviously were only trailing by one point, but again, he gives Creasery an opportunity here to score the basketball again. She misses both of those, but Shauna Dooley comes out with the rebound and finishes in style. 21-18, they lead here. And that is their lead as they go to half time. That is the end of quarter two here. Skull Crease 3 up by three.
Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena in Tala, where quarter three is about to get underway here in this under 16A girls final. Skull Crease 3 marginally leading 21 18. Danny, what do you think was being said there at halftime? It's neck and neck. Uh, I think in the Castle Island, and I think John Enright will be pointing out the fact that obviously they did go in at the end of the first quarter losing on a scoreline of 8 to 2. So obviously they scored 16 points that quarter, so they actually won the second quarter 16 13. So they can continue, just get marginal gains, just continue every quarter, just to slightly uh, improve on that quarter, maybe win the next three quarters. You should see Presentation Castellano win the game. Yes, indeed. Well, it's going to be an interesting one, to say the least, as just as you say it, Sarah Fleming knocks down a huge score there to get them off the mark for the second half. Yeah, I think Pat Critchley will be from his team at halftime. He'll be talking about um, the good first quarter they had and how they got that lead and just how important the third quarter is now again to try and build on a bit of a lead. They need, I was just about to say they need to get the score up before the shot clock, but it ran out. 7 7 to play here. And it seems as if Pat Critchley there just on the defensive end, uh, I know I mentioned there in the second quarter he made a change. And they've started this quarter now in his zone defence. He'll be happy with how the first defensive play went because obviously forcing Castle Island into a 24 second shot clock, shot clock violation. So uh, I think Coach Pat Critchley will be really happy how that first possession went. Fleming with the shot. Lovely score. They did so well there. Fleming put up the long three. Port Leash got the offensive rebound, moved it around patiently until Fleming was free once more and she took the shot just in outside the free throw line. Made it look easy there as it's responded to in kind at the other end. It's game on here at the arena, 25-20. Fleming kicks it outside to Reading. Jasmine Burke with the drive, runs into one of her own players though and called for a travel. Mary Nolte, you might just know what is there as well. Number seven, Kara Byrne for Cree Street. She's actually still on the bench. As I mentioned in the second quarter, she picked up her third foul. So obviously Coach Pat Ritchie felt that you know it wasn't enough time to put her back in. So it'll be interesting to see how long exactly he leaves her sitting on the bench with this game being really close. Yeah, definitely an interesting one indeed because on the on the flip side of it, Emma O'Regan is on the court for Castle Island with three fouls. She's definitely the bright spark of the Castle Island offense at the moment. As Shauna Dooley out to Fleming, finds Dooley once more. Great defense from Castle Island. And they manage to dispossess Grania O'Reilly on her drive through. And a quick break up the other end. And that is why she's still on the court, Emma O'Regan. What a score. Yeah, I think Coach John Enner realises obviously the offensive presence that Emma O'Regan brings. And even though she's on three folds, um, and as hard working as ever on the defence, I think John Enright is willing to take the risk. At the end of the day, it is the under 16A league final, potentially the last game for the, the two schools. So I think Coach Enright is looking to take the risk on Emma and leave her out there as she can be the driving force for the offence. And just as we talk about her, Kira Byrne is indeed checked back into the game, but Coach Enright spots it, and we've got a timeout here with 5.06 to go.
5.06 to go here in quarter three, and it is a three-point game. Skull Creek 3 with their noses just in front, 25-22. As that inbound goes astray for Castle Island, and they're called for a backcourt. Just had a little bit too much on it. Kira Byrne. Dishes it out to Redden. Yeah, foul called inside there on Anya Sheehan, who's checked back into the game for Castle Island. Redden. Outside to Dooley. Kira Burns calling for it. She gets it. And a lovely hook shot. It doesn't drop for it, though. But again, it is a skull creasery ball as the supporters trying to lift their team. Burn. Good hands there. Emma O'Regan almost gets the steal. Dooley gets her own rebound. And again, it is O'Regan who's battling there. And the jump ball is going in favour of Port Leash. A lot of pressure here, Danny, from Port Leash. That's a couple of uh, inbounds they're after getting here now. And Castle Island still on defence. Yeah, I think I think um, Coach Pat Critchie will be really happy with that. Obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the team that generally takes the more shots will have the more success. And I think even though his team aren't knocking down their first attempts, he'll be happy the way that they're attacking the basket, getting the rebounds, and keep creating opportunities. At the other end, meanwhile, Grania Walsh on the drive. She gets dispossessed, and it's gone out for a Castle Island ball. So they will be looking to get a score from this offence. 4.16 to go here in this third quarter. And a lovely play. Almost reaps rewards for them. And it's almost a replica of what happened at the other end of the court just a couple of minutes ago. It's now all Castle Island ball. Oh, super interception there by Sarah Fleming. Comes off the foot of O'Regan though. I think O'Regan will be happy with that there. She got the defence to stop by kind of accidentally getting her foot in the way to block the ball. Obviously, in that position there, she wouldn't have really wanted to play defence in a one-on-one -on -one situation, which could have resulted in her picking up another foul. So, really, really good job by uh, Emma O'Regan there to put herself in position to stop the ball without uh, committing a foul. Yeah, definitely, and it slowed the whole attack down as well as... Rebecca Redden gets the score for Port Leash and will also be going to the free throw line as she draw, drew the foul. And a five point gap now on the scoreboard could possibly open up to six. And it does, you've got to look Danny as well at how evenly matched these teams are because if you look at their cup final score, Skull Crease 3 scored a whopping 68 points that day. And we are ticking here in the third quarter, and it's a 28 to 22 point game still. Yeah, I think obviously the first quarter, the slow start, obviously finishing after eight minutes of basketball with A2, probably will have um, an impact on the overall score of the game. But if you take away that, um, obviously taking the, the last 13 minutes of basketball, it's been fairly high scoring. So I think both teams will be happy with how it's gone. Three thirty-one to go here. Crease three by six. Jump ball in favour of Castle Island. And Emma O'Regan. Draws the foul. Aoife Kearns has checked into the game for presentation as well. 
Mary, what's interesting now about the crease three uh, defense is um, actually Coach Packridge is actually actually changing things up again. So as they look down there now, they're going back into a man-to-man -man, uh, style offense. Oh, sorry, style defense. So again, it just shows the level of coaching here in the under-16 schools basketball. They're already in this game. Crease three have put up four different types of defense, really trying to disrupt Coach Enright. Yeah, well, just as you were speaking there, Emma O'Regan with a huge score again for Castle Island. To close it back to four points, Kira Byrne tricks the defence, drives baseline, and it's come all the way back out to Shauna Dooley for a huge three. That was excellent basketball there. We had the ball on the far left-hand side of the court. There was a drive baseline. They didn't feel the shot was on, so they reversed the ball out to the other side. And as the defence was just moving across to play defence, ball got swung in, a lovely three-point shot for the attempt, and a lovely score. Really good basketball there by Chris Three. And a great steal there from Kearns, who's not long on the court though, but Gemma Kearney's shot well blocked by Skull Crease 3. And somehow the ball finished up in Sarah Fleming's hand there in that passage of play. And with 1.58 on the clock, it is 33 24. I think Kara Byrne does need to get a mention of that last score there. As her team obviously the ball went out, the ball went to the floor. Kara dived on the ball and pushed the ball through her opponent's legs, finding her own teammate with a nice easy two. So excellent basketball. Subs both sides here. Grania O'Reilly coming in for Crease 3 while Kira Fitzgerald and Hilary O'Connor for Castle Island. Foul called there as Port Leash went in on the attack, so it's gone out for a Castle Island ball. And again, Emma O'Regan, one of the standouts today, for me at least. Kira Fitzgerald to Kearney, outside to O'Regan. Somehow keeps a hold of it on the left hand and pops it up for a, a lovely score, 33-26. Reads the scoreboard with 1.03 to go as it comes out to Dooley. That last score there by Emma Regan was a really big score because obviously she didn't want her team to go in uh, to the end of this quarter being down 10 points. So really, really big score for her. <laughs> and a nutmeg there as well with that bounce pass. What a score. Very clever as well from O'Regan. Just lovely bounce pass through the legs of the crease three defense and resulted in a vital score jasmine burke at the other end it doesn't fall for her. and again fitzgerald with the rebound she needs help she finds it carney jasmine burke read that one the whole way up over a jump ball it's going to go to skull crease three Seventeen point one seconds to go in this third quarter. Super defense again from Castle Island. Gets the ball back with three seconds. They need to put it up. Oh, oh what a score. 33 31 on the buzzer there for Castle Island.
the fourth quarter of a thrilling under 16A girls All-Ireland Schools League final about to get underway here at the National Basketball Arena in Tala. Skull Crease Ree leading the way, but just by two, 33-31 against presentation of Castle Island. Danny, this game really could go anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, if you were to look back at two minutes to go in that quarter, Skull Crease Ree were leading by eight points. But after a big score, just to beat the 24 second shot clock by M.O. Regan, gave her team a bit of confidence. And again, no, they're only down two points. So I suppose, again, similar to the second quarter, Castle Island again, sorry, Presentation Castle Island again won that quarter by a single digit. So they won that quarter by one. So I think John Henry will still probably be the happier of the coaches, uh, but he'll be looking for a good start. They seem to always end the quarter as well, but Coach Henry will be definitely looking for a good start here with them having the first possession. And it is Oregon on the baseline inbounding it's come back out to her a lovely bounce pass through oh what a score to tie the game Gemma Kearney great vision from O'Regan a lovely bounce pass through to the incoming Kearney and she finished the layup well at the other end of the court meanwhile Shauna Dooley is looking to find her range again And jump ball is called and it's gone out for a port leash ball. Dooley out to burn. Jasmine Burke to burn again. She goes for the long shot. And it's tapped out nicely by Castle Island. And they are on the attack once more. The idea was right there, the cross-court pass from Grania Walsh to Kira Fitzgerald, but she, Shauna Dooley, had a little bit extra height and managed to tap it out of play and gives her team time to reset their defense. Kearney gets her own rebound. Oregon. Port Leash starting to anticipate that baseline inbound play. Yeah, I think what uh, Coach Enright is trying to do there is he's trying to get Emma Oregon to inbound the ball, pass the ball in, and come back in, then maybe to get her on a scoring opportunity. Um, on the other end, obviously, Pat Critchley is realising that. So obviously, the girls have been very, very aggressive on the inbound pass, forcing some difficulties to Castle Island. Oregon needs to get the shot up. And instead, Rebecca Redden to Dooley to Kira Byrne. She can't be left open like that. And that's exactly why. Give her an inch and she will take the mile. Great score by Kira Byrne to push them back ahead by two. It was super offense there by Cree Street. What they realized that Emma Regan hadn't got back to the floor after her last knock. So they had five on four opportunity, meaning, meaning Byrne was open for a nice two. And it was 2v1 there for Port Leash as Grania Walsh outnumbered. And two quick baskets by Skull Cree Street, settling the nerves perhaps after a lot of pressure from Castle Island at the other end of the course. Oof. Drive there from Grania Walsh, deemed to be a charge. And it is possession port leash. Fleming. She's put up a good few of those today, Danny, at key times as well. 
you know that was a huge shot there by Fleming like really with um, five and a half minutes to go you know to put a six point lead it, it, the, the clock now was kind of in their favour Dooley follows up and I would say yes we are we are headed for a timeout with 5.14 to go in this fourth quarter Five fourteen to go here in quarter four. Skull Crease three with a bit of a run there in the last minute or two to open the gap to 42-33 against a presentation Castle Island. And O'Regan. Outside to Walsh, that shot doesn't fall for her though and Kira Brown trying to keep it in play for Skull Crease 3 but it's gone out for a Castle Island ball once more Oregon down to Sheehan Falls back to Kearney. Great work by Fitzgerald again under the boards, but height and time going against them. Yeah, that was really good uh, defense to stop there. It's so hard at times, obviously, to, to keep a team from getting a shot even off at the basket within 24 seconds, but really good from Cree Street there. That's like the second time this game where they've shut the team out. Really good to see. Yeah, foul called under the boards there. Grania Walsh pushed as she went to collect that rebound. So Castle Island will have time to set up here again. 4.14 to go. They have plenty of time. O'Regan fancies the shot. Straight off the back of the rim, though. And Fleming for Port Leash to Kira Byrne again left open there Jasmine Burke and that looks like it's going to be O'Regan's fourth foul it is nervy time now Danny for coach Enright yeah and I think this has been the team for throughout the game they've generally started each quarter slow Castle Island and then what they've done they've found themselves as a quarter time gradually getting themselves into it the only thing in this end obviously being at the last quarter this last three minutes 56 seconds may not be in their favor obviously they're down nines so they will really need to probably get something out of the next offense and with O'Regan on four fouls we'll need to she'll need to mind how she goes for the last 356 Kearney with the super drive. Can it drop for her? No, she's unlucky as she spun past three or four defenders. Kira Byrne tries to do the same at the other end, picks up her own rebound. And Anya Sheehan battling hard. And it's called for a jump ball. Kira Byrne 
Fleming. Jasmine Burke. Great defense by Castle Island. I think they forced that shot clock violation there. Yeah, and I think that last second there, just the fact that they held um, Chris Reed not getting that shot off and not getting that score to uh, actually go on the scoreboard. It's going to be really benefit. Obviously, nine-point game with 3.15 to go. There's still a lot to play for here. Oh, great interception. Oh, she's unlucky there, Gemma Carney, because she read that so well. Kira Byrne. Fleming. Burke. Again, big defensive pressure here from Castle Island. Super pass by Shauna Dooley. Around the defense, though, to find Jasmine Burke. And then the shot goes up. Oh, very, very good defense there by Grania Walsh to get a travel violation called. But even on that last one there, that offensive rebound there by Jasmine Burke actually just gave Chris Ree an extra 14 seconds there to hold the ball. So they nearly had the ball there for nearly 32 seconds. Again, that won't help Castle Island as the clock is going against them. The workhorse that is Emma O'Regan driving through the defense and has drawn the foul. And we're headed for a timeout. Castle Island, 2.27 to go here in quarter four. Two twenty-seven to go here in quarter four. Forty-two plays thirty-three. Danny, what would you be saying as coach N right now after that timeout? I think coach N will just be stressing the importance of the clock. Obviously, as Emma goes to the line, Harrow, he'll be hoping obviously his star player can knock down uh, these two shots, which would then bring it back to a seven-point game. He'll be trying to get them to maybe put as much pressure as they can. On the defence, not allowed to crease three to hold for the full 24 seconds. And again, on the other end, he'd be encouraging them to try and get quick shots, get to the free throw line, try and score the basketball while the clock is stopped. Two twenty-two to go. Can crease three hold on? to this lead and finish a memorable, what would be a memorable season for them, a cup and league double. I think being cup champions will play in their favour here as well. Obviously they'll be used to playing in the arena in this position, used to obviously again winning and things like that. So again, I think this will probably, could be against presentation Castle Island being up against cup champions when they are winning with two minutes to go. Dooley tried to find Fleming inside, but she ain't got a hand to it. Emma O'Regan taking her time. And we're headed for a timeout here with 1.35 to go in the quarter.
135 to go here in this fourth quarter. Skull Crease 3, Port Leash leading Presentation Castle Island 42 34. A point game. Is there time, Danny? I think, I think the fact they're obviously just in a minute and a half left to go. If you were playing against anybody else, you got to fancy yourself. But obviously, look, the Cup champions, Crease 3, do have experience, you know, winning um, all Ireland here in the National Basketball. That may go in their favour, depending on how the next offence can go. But look, Crease 3's defence, it doesn't look like they're giving up anything. They're playing as hard and as aggressive as they were in the very first possession. Um, so it's going to be really, really tough for Castle Island if they are to try and get a basket here. Priestery battling and they have got the possession back. We've ticked under the minute mark now. Kira Byrne was going to take the shot but realises that just keeping the ball for a little bit longer works in their favour. Twenty seven seconds. Forty two thirty four still here in the arena. Foul called inside. And it looks like two shots, it does indeed. Gemma Kearney from the free throw line. Danny, you have to give it to Castle Island today. Absolutely did not give up here whatsoever. And a shout out for Emma O'Regan as well. What a display here from them. Yeah, I was really impressed how Castle Island played. And the beauty of the school's basketball, it's under 16 basketball. These teams will be back here again. You know, you never know, obviously, uh, next year, two years' time, under 19 basketball. These, ex these exact two teams could be right in front of us again. So really good to see Castle Island play until the very end. Yes, indeed, and that is the buzzer. Skull Crease 3 are back to back All Ireland champions this season. The cup is sitting in their trophy cabinet, and now the league title is on its way there as well. What coaching from Pat Critchley. He's retired teacher there, but he's gone back coaching at the school. And what a job he's done. They won the cup last year, missed out on the league. Castle Island won the league last year. But they came back this year, all guns blazing, and they have won the cup and the league double.